Pass Gilbert, the architect of the Woolworth Building, said a skyscraper is a machine that makes land pay. And what that means is that a skyscraper allowed population to go up into the sky and to make more land and to increase space by density. So Manhattan is an island and you can't add much more land to it. So a skyscraper allowed people to work in much closer areas and have more density and have more office buildings with the law offices, real estate offices, um, financial institutions all be in one small area without having to travel from far distances. So my name is Josh Vogel. I'm the gallery manager of the Skyscraper Museum here in Lower Manhattan. I have a background in urban studies and urban policy. One of the criteria for a skyscraper is that it has to have a steel skeleton. So the easiest way to understand it is just how a person has a skeleton that holds up everything inside of them and is their structure and if someone pushes them over, if the wind, that's what helps them stay stable. The same thing works. It's the same way that it works with a skyscraper. Right here we have two great examples of different structures. In the 1870s, 1880s to the 1890s, there was this progression of going from masonry to steel, but it wasn't just a quick jump like that. There was kind of a hybrid in between where architects and engineers started introducing steel or iron, but still used bearing wall. So bearing wall is a masonry or a wall that holds the weight of the building, not just having a structure inside that supports it. So this right here is the Havemeyer building. We 3D printed these based on the original architectural and uh, engineering uh, blueprints. And the iron or steel would help hold the load of the building, but it would be fastened in a masonry wall so it was kind of hybrid masonry and steel. Unlike this building here, the American Surety Building, which is still standing on Broadway just north of Wall Street, this is a true skeleton structure skyscraper. Uh, it was built in the late 1890s and everything, the whole structure is self-supporting, just like a skeleton and a person, and the masonry, we can see a photo of it right in back on the wall, the masonry, the windows, the floors, everything rests on this building. So the walls are curtain walls. They just hang on the structure. Bessemer made manufacturing steel much more accessible. And when you have steel and are able to hang the masonry and the windows and the, the floors on that, you're able to open up the space inside. And you can also build much taller because it helps to uh, helps with load bearing and it helps to make this uh, skyscraper withstand wind pressure. They do sway, they have to sway, just like if someone pushed me, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna stand straight, I'm gonna absorb that um, force and move back a little bit. So the same thing happens with a skyscraper. The steel structure and the technology that allowed buildings to get taller became a worldwide um, trend. And not only were buildings built to make more land and have developers get a better return on their investment and keep more, put more people in one space, but they became defining iconic images of cities all around the world. So there's only two existing presentation models of the Twin Towers, and one of them, the one, the Yamasaki one, Minoru Yamasaki was the architect of the Twin Towers, we used to have that here and now it's in the 9-11 Museum. It's much taller than this, it's about 10 feet tall. And then this one uh, was a Port Authority presentation model. The Luckily they had it in storage and a lot of people, just like the Empire State Building, was called the Empty State Building when it was first built and it took a while for New Yorkers to accept it and for tenants to move in. The same thing with the Twin Towers. They were built in the early 70s and the city was going through a recession at the time and they kind of symbolized this excessive spending by government and urban renewal too. This is after decades of the city demolishing neighborhoods, displacing residents, building these big civic projects or highways, um, but at the expense a lot of time of the population. So this kind of represented that to a lot of people. But over time, especially with a, a tightrope walker that went across the top, the popular culture embraced it, New Yorkers embraced it. After the tragic events of 9-11, it became ingrained in history and um, everybody knows the Twin, if they didn't, now they know about the Twin Towers. So having these models existing is a great record of history and 
uh, luckily we're able to have it at the museum and let people see it.